हॅलो फ्रेंड्स लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस माय सेल्फ फर्स्ट आय एम प्रोफेसर रोहकुले बाळासाहेब अंबादास फ्रॉम आर बी एन बी कॉलेज श्रीरामपूर इन दिस व्हिडिओ वी आर गोईंग टू स्टडी द फेमस इंग्लिश एसे एंटायटल्ड ॲज ऑन सेंग प्लीज बाय ए जी गार्डिनर द एसे इज प्रिस्क्राईब्ड ॲट एफ वाय बी ए सावित्रीबाई फुले पुणे युनिव्हर्सिटी पुणे टेन्शन प्रेशर स्ट्रेन स्ट्रेस वरी अँड बर्डन आर द प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ मॉडर्न एज Sometimes we hurt our listener through our language. So the main aim of this essay is to know the importance of polite language in our day-to-day life. We are going to study this essay under different heads. The first introduction in this part we will study the life and work of A.G. Gardiner. Second, we will study the different themes used in On Saying Please. The third is rude and short-tempered liftsman. The fourth, discourtesy and impolite, not a legal offense. The fifth, difference between physical and emotional or spiritual wound. Sixth, chain of bad manners. Then, value of social practice. Then, gardeners meeting with the polite bus conductor. Next is how manners are contagious. Then we will study true and proper way to take revenge and then we will study the conclusion of the essay. So far as the first point of our uh, essay is concerned, it is introduction. And in the introduction, we will study life and work of A.G. Gardiner. Alfred George Gardiner was born on 2nd of June 1865 and died on 3rd March 1946. He was one of the most distinguished journalist, editor, English essayist and social reformer of the 20th century. His essays were written under the pen name Alpha of the Plow. He gives a new dimension to little acts of life. His essays are elegant, attractive, graceful, glamorous, delightful, humorous, philosophic and thought-provoking. They are written with easy and amazing manner. They explain simple but serious universal thought and teach to mankind. The present essay depicts A.G. Gardiner's personal experience with a didactic tone. The second part, we are going to know about the major works of A.G. Gardiner. The first, Prophet, Priest and Kings, published in 1908. The second one is The Pillars of Society, published in 1913. Next is The War Lords, 1915. Next is Pebbles on the Shore, published in 1916. Then comes Windfalls in 1920. Then comes What I Saw in Germany, published in 1920. Next comes Life of George Cadbury, published in 1923. Then comes Many Pharaohs published in 1924. Then comes John Ben and the Progressive Movement, published in 1925. Then comes Portrait and Portents, published in 1926. And last but not the least, Certain People of Importance, published in 1929. In the second part, I'll focus on theme of the present essay that is on saying please. So far as the essay is concerned, courtesy civility, politeness, morality, responsibility, good manners, and the value of language in our day-to-day -day life. So far as the importance of good manners in society is concerned, here A.G. Gardiner appeals to be polite and gentle in our day-to-day -day life. He asks to follow good manners and avoid bad manners. He says, Good action gets good reaction, while bad action gets bad reaction. Simply it means, as you sow, so shall you reap. He focuses attention on saying natural politeness, which is the need and demand of civilized society. He says, good manners cultivate our mind, while rude behavior disturb our emotional and spiritual balance. Like a clever lawyer, he clarifies his opinion by giving certain example. So the first example is concerned with 
रूड एंड शॉर्ट टेम्पर्ड लिफ्ट मन वंस अ मैन एंटर्स इन हिज लिफ्ट एंड इंस्टेड ऑफ सींग टॉप प्लीज ही इज ओनली सेज टॉप द लिफ्ट मन डिसलाइक्स इज मैनर एंड बिकम्स वेरी एंग्री एट हिम ही आस्क द मैन टू से टॉप प्लीज बट द मैन रिफ्यूजेस टू से प्लीज द लिफ्ट मैन लूजेस इज इमोशनल कंट्रोल एंड इमिजिएटली थ्रोज द मैन आउट ऑफ द लिफ्ट लेटर ऑन द लिफ्ट मैन इज फाइन फॉर हिज रॉन्ग ऑफेंस Here, Gardner tries to indicate that this courtesy is not a legal offence. It does not permit us to attack. We are permitted to attack a burglar who breaks into our house. In such a case, both the burglar as well as the attacker are guilty. Still, the law can protect the attacker. It permits us to retaliate with reasonable violence when we are beaten. but there is no law against bad manner hence it is not a legally punishable offense we always have sympathy at the young liftsman but law is reasonable sometime we do not like somebody's behavior or his tone still we are not allowed to box his ears or beat him if we do so life would be a battlefield the gutters of the city would run with blood all day after all man is a social animal and he should not forget that the world cannot go as per the individual's wish after all life is an adjustment we can be uncivil haunty and boorish as per our wish but nobody has a right to beat anybody in this case the law protects us but the same law does not force us to say please there is no law against uncivil behavior only who behaves rudely can be called an ill-mannered fellow nobody would have any objections against the individual right we may or may not wax our mustache we can dye our hair or wear ringlets of our own choice nobody have any objection next Ezi Gardiner differentiates physical and spiritual wounds. There is no legal penalty against moral or intellectual damage, though they are more harmful and injurious. It does not mean that the intellectual damages are negligible or unimportant. On the contrary, they are more harmful and injurious than physical wounds or damage. We easily forgive the person who wounds us physically. but we always remember the wound to our self respect and vanity so one has to take care not to harm anybody spiritually at any cost because as it can affect the social relations the harmful words continuously rankle in our heart or in our soul physically wounds can be cured by medicine but unfortunately there is no medicine for spiritual or emotional own so we should be more cautious while we use language next gardiner explains that the bad manners have a long chain to clarify his points he illuminates that the lipsman's self respect might be injured he might throw the man to control his mental or emotional balance his rude behavior might pacify his anger or catharsis or outlet for his excessive anger perhaps he does not want to go at home and take out his anger on his wife but he fails to understand why the man refuses to say top please the man might be insulted by his boss or employer the boss or employer might be handpicked at breakfast by his wife the wife might be wounded by the housemaid in the third example gardiner tells how sir anthony absolute tortures captain absolute then captain absolute goes out and tortures his man named mr fag later on mr fag goes out and kicks the page boy it shows bad manners have a long chain gardiner here appeals his readers to understand one another and break the chain which is essential to live peaceful life this is the top secret of life which makes it meaningful bad temper and bad manners have a magical attraction 
and anybody can easily affected of it they poison the stream of real life majority of the crimes are the products of the bad manners plenty of women in the world are the victims of miserable temper of men even some of them become the martyrdom of the bad manners the above examples illustrate how bad manners shift from one person to another they are like harmful virus which attack the human soul then gardener shifts his focus on the significance of good manners we are aware of law is helpless to make the society cultured still we the readers support the liftsman's rude behavior and have sympathy at him but we should remember that social practice is much ancient precious and sacred than any law it guides us to live public life in real sense it is not hard to practice civility or politeness we do not need to pay for it the first test of civility is that we should be acknowledge the service of others we must say please when we need the service then we must say thank you when we receive the service if we are guilty we must not hesitate to say sorry these three are magical and enchanted words we show our culture and spiritual mentality they play a vital role to make the society civilized and healthy they supply oil to machine of our life to function it smoothly they have capacity to remove the line between superiors and inferiors according to gardiner only a vulgar can use command while asking a service so being a civilized human we must learn to respect others in the second example gardiner explains importance of saying please the example explains the character of a polite bus conductor in the contemporary era conductor behaves with the passengers as his natural enemy they are very impolite and rude with their passengers but gardiner's bus conductor is exception of it he is just opposite to the assumptions the pleasant personality and helpful manners of the conductor impresses gardiner once he boards a bus very hurriedly and has no penny to pay the bus fare as he forgets his wallet at home he finds himself in a critical and unexplainable situation in such circumstances conductor usually thinks that the passenger cheats him gardiner appeals the bus conductor to stop the bus and explain the reasons behind it but the bus conductor politely tells him that there is no need to get off he behaves very generously and pays the amount of the bus fare such conductors are very rare so the essayist still remembers the whole incident the example highlights the need of civility and good manners in our day to day social life next gardiner shares his second experience with the same bus conductor as he travels by bus he is busy in reading a book his toe is heavily tramped by the same bus conductor gardiner looks at him with anger and agony the conductor politely says that as he has also trodden many times while traveling can understand the pains of the passenger the conductor immediately apologizes and asks sorry for it he regrets that he wears very heavy boots next we are told that the bus conductor always helps the needy in the sun and shower he behaves with the old as a son and with children as a father his good temper kind nature and natural courtesy as well as good manners are remarkable service to man is service to god is his motto in short we can say he is an ideal person for the ideal society his good virtues compel gardiner to forget the pain of his toe according to gardiner both good and bad manners are equally infectious or contagious we are uncivil when we encounter uncivil person in a rude way our cheerful behavior impresses and influences others it should be remembered that good manners gets good response while bad manners get bad response a person speak with polite tone hardly get rude response words are like sharp weapons they can hurt the listener so the speaker has to be very cautious while using the words 
Polite language is a sound investment for the better future and it helps to create healthy atmosphere. It gives pleasure to both the speaker as well as the listener. Here Gardiner quotes John Keats, the famous romantic poet's quotation, nothing clears up my spirit like a fine day. Coming up to the conclusion, Gardiner says that war has destroyed the civility of behavior. So now it is the duty and responsibility of every citizen to get it back. Not law, but spontaneous attempt can bring it back and helps to make our life kind and tolerable. We must be aware that spiritual or emotional life is more precious than the material one. Gardiner believes that the policeman and the law are the symbols of less cultured society. The user of polite language can achieve spiritual as well as moral victory which is more important. To explain his statement, Gardiner quotes the third example of Chesterfield. One day a man meets Chesterfield in the street and says, I never give the wall to a scoundrel. While answering the rude person, Chesterfield uses very polite language and says, but I always do. Here, the revenge is taken, but in a polite as well as effective way. Finally, Gardiner says, if the Lipman takes such a revenge against the person, it would be his moral victory. In this way, Gardiner asks us to peep in the hearts of others. He explains the utility and importance of polite language, a valuable virtue which reflects culture of the speaker. It can spell and hypnotize the listeners. The users of polite language receive respect and love from others. It costs nothing but can buy everything. The essayist illuminates the logic how to pursue and convince the others through the polite language. I hope you like this video. Thanks a lot to spare time with me.